Right. Thank you very much for staying with us, guys. I hope you enjoyed a lot of what we brought to you today. Remember, I told you we're still continuing with analytical geometry for the rest of the week. It's a very new week, a brand new setup of our show as well. You're probably wondering, where are my soldiers? Well, we're now running with a one man, one, uh, um, one show kind of like setup where you will only see one teacher as opposed to seeing us uh, like we did uh, over the past few weeks. So uh, do uh, uh, keep that in mind. That's, good. That's what's going to happen from now on moving uh, forward. So thank you very much to Liberty for sponsoring our show. We are able to bring you this awesome content because of them. Uh, do keep your questions coming through. We really like seeing them and we want to help you guys to make sense of the math that you are working with at your schools. We're now going to go to a question that was sent to us to, uh, by Smangele. It's probably our last question for the day. Let's go check out what Smangele had to say. I mean, I to all. My name is Mangele, my surname is Lomo. I want some help in mathematics, analytic geometry. Oh, thank you, Sma. Thank you very much. Back to analytical geometry. Quite awesome. Very involved question. Very nice and, and intriguing indeed. So I want us to first of all look at it together so you guys can be able to see it. Because if I start talking to you about it and you haven't seen what the question was actually, it becomes quite more uh, unfair on you. I want you to see what I'm actually looking at right now. Let's look at the screen quickly. It says to us, in the diagram below, the equation of the circle having a center M. The equation of the circle having the center M is X plus 1 squared plus Y plus 1 squared equals to 9. Now, smangin. I'm looking at this question, I'm thinking the reason why it probably looks complicated is because the examiner is talking about a circle that is not even on this drawing. There's no circle here, but they're talking about it. Well, we will have to edit. This happens a lot in analytical geometry, where we talk about something that is not on a drawing, but you guys need to edit. So don't be surprised when this happens. Okay, cool. So I'm going to edit later on when I'm done reading the statement. R is a point um, on chord AB. Aha. Now, that's a very important part of the question. It says there's a chord. And if you understand what a chord is, you will know how the circle needs to be uh, uh, sketched here. Okay, fine. So I'm going to use yellow to draw this particular circle that is centered at M, such that MR, all right, uh, bisects AB. So this circle has a chord that passes through A and passes through B. So the circumference has to also pass through both A and B. Now I'm thinking about how the circle is going to look. And I'll have an ugly drawing that basically looks like something along these lines. Let me see. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it will look something like that. Right. Uh, not very nice uh, circle, but you probably get the idea of what is going on here. Right. My art skills are not that uh, on point. Anyways, so there's a chord. You can see clearly that AB is basically a chord and MR is a line from the center right to the chord. And you were told that it actually bisected. So just by looking at this, at the back of my mind, I'm thinking theorem one. Grade 11, Euclidean geometry, there you have it. Because you know from that that if a line from the center bisects a chord, it must be perpendicular to the chord. You see how you need to integrate your knowledge of the other concepts of math? Because there isn't a lot that we can actually talk about here. And then it goes on further to say ABT is a tangent. ABT is a tangent. So it's a tangent to a circle having a center end. Ah, there's another circle here, which is basically the second question, the second uh, circle to this question. Let me see what I can use to draw this one. Um, I'm thinking maybe green will help us. So I have to draw it such that this line at T here, it becomes a tangent. So T has to be tangential. So I'm going to draw it like that. Quite awesome. Ah, there we have it. There's a new circle, the green circle now. Okay, cool. They were not here, but uh, they are apparently part of the question. So if you don't draw them, you're going to struggle to try and analyze this question. Okay, fine. It says to us the N is the point 3 is to 2, and the tangent meets this circle, the green circle, at the point T, where X is 4 and Y is equal to 1. Once more, we now have to continue and engage our knowledge of analytical geometry. Very simple. Not complicated. As long as you understand what is given and how do I work out um, whatever is required using the magic part. What is the magic? Well, it is the concept, the actual concept that you are working with. Okay, cool. So when I look at this, I'm just going to save time and not necessarily write all the given information here. I'll say what is given is this. This is basically what we are given. This is what is given to us. The magic part is you have to convert this to the standard form. It is already in standard form. We just need to write the coordinates of M. M is the center of the yellow circle. So M will simply be this value plus 1 here. Remember to change the sign. It's going to be minus 1. 
and then plus one there, which is also going to be minus one. Very simple at all, not complicated. We're moving right along to the second uh, part of this question. So when I move forward, uh, I keep in mind that there's a circle here, which is um, passing through this point and that point. There's a green circle here again, which is tangential to this one at that point there. Excuse the ugly drawings. And I've got um, the coordinates of M, which is basically minus one and minus one. I might need this. Right. Okay, cool. So now if I continue further to try and quickly um, find the solutions to this. They're asking us to find the equation. Determine the equation of a t in the form y is mx plus c. All right, so what do you know about what is happening here? Well, this is a tangent, right? This is a tangent. And for me to find the equation of a tangent, which is a straight line, I need two things. What do you need? Well, the magic thing about the equation of a straight line is you need a gradient. And you also need a point that the line passes through for you to be able to find the equation of that line. What point do I have? I need to use the point that the line passes through. So I'm simply going to take point T because the tangent passes through point T. It's the only point that I am actually sitting with here in this question. So I'm going to put the point 4 is to 1. The gradient. Well, uh, I need to find the gradient now. There isn't enough information for us to find the gradient of the line that passes through A, R, B, as well as T. So what I'm simply going to do, I'm going to use the fact that um, a tangent is always perpendicular to, um, to um, the radius of the circle. So by firstly finding the gradient of uh, the first number, I'll be the first line, I'll be able to actually work my way around this question. So let's see what will happen. Well, the gradient of the radius is y2 minus y1, right, all over x2 minus x1, which is uh, going to be 2 minus 1 over 3 minus 4, which simply gives us 2 over negative 1, which is negative 1. If that is the case, then we know that uh, the gradient of the radius times the gradient of the tangent must give us negative 1. So this is minus 1 times the required gradient is negative 1. Therefore, the gradient we want must just simply be plus 1. Very simple. Okay, cool. So now that's my gradient. I'm going to use plus 1 as my gradient and use the equation of a straight line. Y is mx plus c. Very nice. That's my gradient that I'm looking for. And the point is y is 1. The gradient is 1. The x value is 4. And we are looking for C. So that's 4. When you transpose it to the left, you'll get minus 3 is equal to C. Very simple and not complicated at all. Therefore, the equation is simply going to be Y is X minus 3. Easy. Very, very simple. Right. Okay. Now we're going to go to um, the second part of this question. We've got the equation of that tangent, which is Y equals to X minus 3. The other part of this question is asking us to show that MR is the square root. Okay. If... It is given that MR is the square root of 10 over 2. We need to find the length of AB. Right, allow me to bring back that yellow circle again so that we can actually use it quickly before we run out of time. All right, we know that this part is equal to this. We know that this is perpendicular. We are told the value of one of those sides there, which is MR. The distance from M to R is given to us as, uh, what is this? Okay, fine, yes. The square root of 10 over 2. So this is the square root of 10 over 2. And we are required to find something very simple here, which is the length of AB. So how long is it from A all the way to B? We want to find the length of the chord. So I'm going to actually cheat this question um, by applying the theorem of Pythagoras. If I can succeed to create a right angle triangle there, work out the length of a, um, AR, I can be able to extend it by doubling it to find the length of the entire chord. Very simple, not complicated at all. All right, cool. So let's see what will happen. I'm going to actually um, draw this so that we've got a right angle triangle. Remember, this is the radius of the circle. So I need to know what was the original radius of this circle. What was it from the opening statement? We were given that the radius squared. Remember this part is r squared. So r squared is 9. Therefore the radius of the circle is simply going to be 3 units. Okay, cool. So r is 3. Right. Then we need that. I'm, I'm sitting with a right angle triangle. This is 3. This is the square root of 10 over 2. I'm looking for a r. Applying Pythagoras, a r squared um, plus uh, the square root of 10 over 2 squared is 3 squared. So AR um, squared is 9 minus the square root of 10 over 2 is basically just 10 over 4 when you subtract. And if you continue there, this is 36 minus 10. Um, I'm just doing it without a calculator. Let's see if it's going to work out. It is simply going to work out quite nicely. 36 minus 10 is basically 26 over 4, which can then simplify to um, your AR. Your AR 
we'll just simply simplify to the square root of that, the square root of 26 over 4, which is basically uh, the square root of 13. No, 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 the square root of 26. I'm not simplifying it further. I want to work with uh, the 4 because I know that 4 is a perfect square. Allow me to work with 4. So when I put this in the square root, the square root of this is going to be the square root of 26 divided by 2. So that just gives me the length. It just gives me the length of the distance from A all the way to R. But remember that AR is equal to RB. Since we're told that the line from the center bisects that chord, it does bisect it into two equal parts. So if I have the length of AR, I can simply use it to work out the length of the other side by just doubling it. So let's double it and see what will happen. Therefore, your AB will just be two times AR, which is simply two times the square root of 26 over 2. Simply there, we can conclude that the length of AB is just the square root of 26. A nice question indeed, Sma. I hope you understand what is going on and you are able to actually um, see how you work your way around this. Remember, analytical geometry will always, always, always integrate either trigonometry or Euclidean geometry because in circles, you see there's two questions you, you get. The grade 11 part is always distance, midpoint, gradient, all those equations and stuff. But when it gets here, it will always uh, engage the other concepts of math. So do make sure that you are able to actually um, uh, integrate them whenever you need to do this. That actually brings us to the end of our show. It has been absolutely fantastic being with you. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. We can't wait to see you guys again tomorrow. Remember to keep sending us your questions. We've got nothing but much love for you. Till we meet again next time, take care. Bye-bye.